And in the second stage, the target is to achieve what is known as a cold shutdown of the reactors. In its revised plan, the government is to specify for the first time what this entails. The government is expected to define the term as bringing the temperature at the bottom of the reactors to about 100 degrees Celsius or lower and substantially reducing the public's exposure to radiation by controlling the release of radioactivity. Achieving a cold shutdown has been cited as one of the conditions for lifting the 20-kilometer no-entry zone around the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Achieving a cold shutdown has been cited as one of the conditions for lifting the 20-kilometer no-entry zone around the Fukushima Daiichi plant. But when this would happen remains unclear, as the government still hasn't decided on benchmark levels of radiation that it deems safe enough to allow people to return to the restricted zone. The top U.S. nuclear chief says he wants to push ahead quickly with regulatory changes for nuclear safety in the United States. The chairman of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Gregory Yatsko, says the NRC will work out what kind of regulatory overhaul is needed based on proposals it's received from a task force. He says he wants the NRC to give clear directions within 90 days. The task force was clear, however, that any accident involving damage to the reactor fuel and uncontrolled radioactive releases of the magnitude of Fukushima even one without significant health consequences, is inherently unacceptable. The task force's proposals call for a reassessment of nuclear plants' preparedness for earthquakes and other natural disasters. They also call for plants to increase their backup power supply so they can keep running in a blackout. The NRC and power companies have taken years to improve safety at U.S. nuclear plants in the past. A strong and large typhoon is affecting western Japan and could make landfall by tonight or early tomorrow morning. We now go to Saki Ochi for the weather desk for the latest information. Saki. Yes, and this is a powerful storm system that we are talking about. One of its main features has been its speed. It's moving pretty slowly, so that's going to mean that stormy weather is going to be impacting a wide area for a long time. And let's get a look at some of this video of just how stormy things are getting already in parts of southern Japan. Very, very strong gusts have been recorded since the morning hours. They've, they have been uh, damaging winds. In fact, um, especially as that the core of the system approaches land with stronger gusts, have uh, been felt too enough to topple electricity poles and even flip cars over. Some injuries have been reported already, so this is proving to be already quite a destructive, and we could be seeing uh, more of that in the next couple of hours as the system continues to approach the region. Now, it could make landfall in the Shikoku area sometime this afternoon, more, um, but either way, it is just going to be really stormy here over the next few days. And of course, along with that, there's that rainfall that we need to be on the watch for into Wednesday noon. Areas here could pick up as much as 800 millimeters, and that will be in addition to all the rain we've seen already. The Kanto area, too, including Tokyo, may see as much as 300 millimeters as well. Now, the showers will also start moving into northern sections of Japan into Thursday as well, so more stormy weather here. On top of that, you want to watch out for more damaging winds winds, that high surf, landslide risk, flood risk will also be very, very high over the next few days. The Japanese government has tonight revived the details of its plan to deal with the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The decision came at a meeting of the Nuclear Disaster Task Force attended by all cabinet ministers on Tuesday. The task force concluded that the first stage of a plan, which was to stabilize the cooling of the crippled reactors, was achieved on, on schedule in mid-July. It, it approved a change to the plan that was originally announced in April. The revision includes details of the second stage to be completed by next January and the next targets about three years after that. The second stage involves a sharp cut in radiation levels. Under the updated plan, the government will carry out regular health checks on residents in Fukushima Prefecture for about 30 years. The test will include thyroid cancer checks for children and measuring the internal radiation exposure of residents. 
The government also said they will start monitoring radiation levels in the evacuation zone, as well as the 20-kilometer no-entry zone, earlier than planned. Italy began to consider lifting its evacuation orders for areas where safety is confirmed after the second stage is achieved. The government will also begin a safety assessment of radiation levels in areas where residents are now being advised to prepare to evacuate in case of an emergency. It will use the results to consider lifting the advisory. Agriculture Ministry will ask all 47 prefectures around the country to check rice straw used to feed cattle for possible radioactive contamination. The move comes after more farms in three northeastern uh, prefectures were found to have shipped beef from cattle that had uh, been fed cesium-tainted straw. Agriculture Minister Michihiko Kano announced the measure on Tuesday. I think it's important that the ministry work with all prefectures to make sure no more cattle are fed straw containing cesium. The ministry had earlier asked only 11 prefectures in the Kanto and Tohoku regions, including Fukushima, to check straw used at livestock farms. They decided to have all prefectures undertake checks after cattle and two other prefectures, Niigata and Yamagata, were also found to have been fed straw containing radioactive cesium above the government set limit. The Agriculture Ministry says they'll also look into whether dealers in eastern Japan sold straw that had been kept outdoors after the Fukushima nuclear crisis began on March 11th. So far, 578 heads of cattle given contaminated feed are known to have been shipped throughout Japan. Some of the meat has apparently been bought and eaten by consumers. And later on Tuesday, Chief Cabinet Secretary Yukio Edenol told reporters that the government has banned the shipment of beef cattle from Fukushima due to fears of cesium contamination. The Japanese government has suspended all beef cattle shipments from Fukushima Prefecture. This follows the discovery of the beef from Fukushima contained illegally high levels of radioactive cesium because the cows had eaten contaminated straw. The government's nuclear disaster task force ordered the suspension on Tuesday. The health ministry says rice straw contaminated with radioactive cesium in amounts exceeding the government standard was fed to cattle at farms in Fukushima, Yamagata, and Niigata prefectures. The ministry says 648 head of cattle were shipped from the farms, and the beef from the cattle was distributed to 35 prefectures. The government says beef from farms in Fukushima was found to be highly radioactive, and that one sample contained nine times the maximum legal amount of radioactive cesium. Edama also said inspections will be conducted to determine whether contaminated rice straw was used at cattle farms in neighboring prefectures. Cattle farmers in Fukushima Prefecture are increasingly worried about their livelihoods. はい。A large and strong typhoon is bringing torrential rain to many areas of Japan. The Meteorological Agency says the typhoon Maon landed in Tokushima Prefecture, southwestern Japan, on early Wednesday morning. It's traveling east-northeast at a speed of 15 kilometers per hour. The typhoon has an atmospheric pressure of 970 hectopascals at its center. Maximum wind speed is 126 kilometers per hour near the center. Rain clouds around the typhoon are bringing heavy rain to western and eastern Japan. In Kochi Prefecture, since Sunday, record rainfall has topped 1,000 millimeters. A 200-meter section of a levee in Aki City has given way, and high waves have been gushing ashore. In Tanabe City, Wakayam Prefecture, a landslide destroyed one house. Firefighters rescued a man and a woman trapped inside. <laughs> The house was suddenly swept away. I'm in shock. I don't know what to do. 
The typhoon has also affected domestic air services. 431 flights were cancelled on Tuesday. The disruption is expected to continue Wednesday. More than 80,000 people who survived the March 11th disaster are still living in evacuation shelters. It's been hard to provide them with the emotional support they need, but some help is at hand in the form of a cuddly robot. Paro is a robot seal. Its internal sensors and artificial intelligence system reacts to touch and conversation. It's been programmed to recognize simple words in five languages. Paro is now being put to therapeutic use to help ease some of the stress felt by people living in emergency shelters. June 19th, 2011. And it says here, Fort Calhoun plan to get oversight. Not good. Federal regulators plan to increase their oversight of Omaha Public Power District's Fort Calhoun nuclear plant because of a new regulatory violation at the plant. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission said Tuesday that the failure of a key electrical part during a test last year, oh gee it was last year and they're just now deciding to give it extra oversight, represented only a low to moderate safety risk, but Fort Calhoun will receive additional scrutiny because of this new violation follows a significant safety current concern regulators found last year. Not going to be new when it was last year. Talking about slow. The new oversight level for Fort Calhoun will be determined in September. Um, I wonder if the flooding is going to be done by then or if that's got anything to do with when they think the flooding will subside a little bit. The NRC says the parts failure did not pose a danger to the public because of other backup systems were still working. Fort Calhoun sits about 20 miles north of Omaha, which has a population of 1.5 million people on the west bank of the Missouri River. All right, there you got it. Bookmark my site. I'll keep you up to date. Stay safe and God bless.